Welcome to the overview of the 220th General Assembly registration process. My name is Andrew Yeager Buckley, your moderator and webinar organizer. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available next week on the 220th General Assembly website, which is located at pcusa.org slash GA220. We're going to go ahead and get started. Today's panelist is Deb Davies. Deb serves the church as the manager of General Assembly meeting service within the Office of the General Assembly. Deb, thanks so much for joining us today. Hello. Since we opened Assembly Registration on March 9th, over 1,200 people have completed their registration, and more are registering every day. Are you one of the ones who have already registered? Congratulations. Please be sure to review the confirmation that you received by email from the GA Meeting Service and contact us with any corrections. If you skipped ordering tickets when you registered, please visit the GA website to download a registration and ticket order form. You'll find it at the register link, or at the page under the register link. You cannot log back into your record after you submit it to add tickets or make other corrections, but you can send in a ticket order form to add tickets to your account. In a few more weeks, you will receive another email from the GA meeting service with notification of your hotel assignment. Now, um, for those of you who have not yet registered, you will want to start by visiting the General Assembly website and reviewing the information there before you begin to register. Here's a quick tour of some of what you will find there. The left-hand sidebar includes the Assembly docket, showing the schedule of business meetings, committee meetings, Assembly worship services, and other official events. Frequently Asked Questions have information about a wide variety of assembly arrangements and services. The answers to some of the questions you may have are probably there. General information for commissioners and advisor delegates is the same information mailed to commissioners and advisor delegates along with the registration and information in QuickView calendar. So most of you already have this. Be sure to review it before you start to register. Orientation resources are where this webinar and others are archived. You can check the featured resources on the right-hand sidebar for materials you can download to assist in your preparations. The expense reimbursement procedures and policies are the, are the same as those mailed to commissioners and advisory delegates. Again, you'll want to be sure to review these before you register. The map of downtown Pittsburgh shows the location of the Convention Center, the Assembly Hotels, and First Presbyterian Church. Take time to download the schedule of events and review it before you start to register. It includes descriptions of numerous optional events scheduled before and during the Assembly and will help you plan your time. And then review information about the Pittsburgh congregations that are hosting assembly participants on Sunday morning so that you can select one of these as you register. And now note the um, other links on the web page. Um, there's the link to PC Biz, a link for Visit Pittsburgh which with information on things to do in the city and the area, and the assembly registration link. Note that this link is only for, obser for observers, staff of presbyteries and synods, seminary staff, and others who are paying their own way to attend the assembly. Commissioners and advisor delegates should not use this registration link. Most of you who are subscribed to these webinars are commissioners and, advisor de ad sorry, and advisory delegates, so we will focus on how you will register for the assembly if you haven't already done this. Your presbytery or seminary has already submitted your name and other information to the GA meeting service. We have been uploading that information into the assembly registration system, and we use that database to send an email to each commissioner and advisory delegate with a link to use to register online. You already have or soon will receive your email from the GA meeting service. 
it is very important that you use the link in your email to start your registration. Do not use anyone else's link and do not forward your link to anyone else to use. Your link connects to your registration. You'll want to make your travel plans to Pittsburgh before you start to register. And first, be sure you know when you need to be in Pittsburgh. That is Thursday for young adult advisory delegates for the orientation that begins on Friday morning, and Friday for commissioners, TSADs, and MADs. The information for commissioners and advisory delegates and the travel expense policies include information for those in areas where travel by car or megabus or Amtrak is feasible and cost effective. The megabus stop and the Amtrak station are both in downtown Pittsburgh near the convention center and the assembly hotels. Most of us will use air travel to get to Pittsburgh and you are receiving a separate email with instructions and a link for booking travel to Pittsburgh through ClickBook and Asimano, the assembly travel agent, to have the fare charged to the assembly. You can also call the travel agency if you're unable to book your travel online. Okay, let's assume that you've reviewed all the pertinent information, planned your travel, and you're now ready to register for the assembly. From your GA registration email that you received, um, click on the, the link. If this doesn't take you to a login create new account page, try pasting the link into your browser. At the login create account page, if you already have an account, um, you, and you may if you registered for the Big Tent or other PCUSA meetings in the last year, uh, use your username and the password you already have to log in. Most of you will create a new account by choosing your own username and password. Take careful note of these so that you can log back in. Both are case sensitive. You will next receive a verification email, usually within a few minutes. Cl click the link in that email to get to your registration profile page. So now we're at the registration profile page. Here you will check the information that is already filled in and make corrections as necessary to your address or phone number, um, information about yourself such as um, racial ethnic and categories, your date of birth. Um, please make sure the information is accurate um, before you proceed. And please be sure to fill in um, missing information, including an emergency contact. Click Next when you are ready to move on. From this family and guest registration page, you can register a spouse or other family members who will accompany you and share your assembly accommodations. If you check on one of these options, you will proceed to a page for filling in their name and other information, including special dietary requests. So click Next now if you're registering only yourself. Um, components is the next page that commissioners and advisory delegates see. Note that observers and others who started their registration from the generic registration link at the GA website will see a page before this one where they will select their role at the assembly. You will, see, you will also see that page for someone you register as a family member. When you start your registration with your email and link, we already know your role, so the process skips that step for commissioners and advisory delegates. Everyone selects a component as they register, even if there is only one option on the page. For commissioners and advisor delegates, the registration fee is waived, so the fee shows as zero. And now click Next to proceed. This is the activities page, is you, where you'll be able to purchase tickets to, um, for optional events scheduled during the assembly. Note that the group meals, starting with Saturday dinner, are pre-checked for commissioners and advisory delegates. 
This page is also where you will select one of the churches to visit on, on Sunday morning. To see more information about any of the ticketed activities, click on the title and it will bring up a description. The same, this is the same description that you'll find in the schedule of events if you downloaded that information. You'll see that there are a lot of opportunities during the assembly. This is, and you'll know why we advised downloading the schedule of events before you start your registration and marking those you are interested in. If you need the assembly to rent a laptop computer for your use during the assembly to access PCBiz, select that option at the end of the page. If you are registering a family member or guest, you would next see a new activity page with his or her name to select their tickets. It also has a column with asterisks to show the tickets you selected for yourself. Family members and guests can select mission tours that you cannot select for yourself, as most are scheduled during plenary, committee, plenary and committee meetings. Remember that after you complete your, and submit your registration, you cannot log back into your account to add tickets, so please take time to make your selections as you register. And now click Next to proceed. That the travel information page is for you to report um, the information on your travel arrangements, of course. So remember to make those before you start and have your itinerary at hand. First indicate how you'll travel to Pittsburgh. Next select the, select the date and time that your plane or bus, etc., is scheduled to arrive in Pittsburgh. The calendar view defaults to today's date, so you need to advance the month to June and select your arrival date. The, the clock view um, shows this in military time. Um, for example, 3 o'clock is PM is actually 15 o'clock. Um, and so use this to fill in the, your, the arrival time of your plane, bus, etc. Select your airline and fill in the, the flight or train or bus number for your um, for your trip to Pittsburgh, into Pittsburgh. And now you'll do the same for your departure date, time, and flight information from Pittsburgh. And that's done. So next, to proceed to the page for requesting lodging during the assembly. If you are staying in your home or somewhere other than one of the assembly hotels, check the Own Arrangements button, and then fill in the requested information about where you're staying. Of course, most of us want a reservation in an assembly hotel. If you filled in your travel arrival dates and times on the preceding page, they will populate the check-in and check-out dates here. You'll need to change that only if you are checking in or checking out of your hotel on days other than your flight and travel ar arrival and departure dates. If you skipped the travel arrival departure dates on the previous page, you will need to use the calendar and clock views on this page to fill in your check-in and check-out dates for your hotel. Those are required to proceed with this registration. Now select one of the options under Room Type. Remember that if you request a single room or if you share a room with your spouse, partner, or other non-registered guest, you will be responsible for paying the other half of the room charges not covered by the assembly budget. If you select, I will share a room with a registered participant, you'll get boxes to fill in his or her name so that we can get you matched for an assignment. Remember that the hotel assignment cannot be made until both roommates have completed their registration, so be sure your roommate is also registering and completes that promptly. Commissioners and advisor delegates also have the option of asking the GA meeting service to select a roommate for them. 
We will match YADs with other YADs, TSADs with other TSADs, et cetera, as we do that matching. Next, rank the hotels in um, your order of preference. And if you have special requests or requirements related to your lodging, please fill that in on this box at the bottom. That's all we need for, uh, in order to make a reservation for you. So um, we'll next, you're almost done. This question page is an opportunity um, for you to provide any other information that you think we should know that you haven't ch had a chance to fill in elsewhere for your registration. And then the next page is the summary page. This is your chance to review the components and activities that you requested as you registered. Review this carefully. Use the previous button at the bottom of the page uh, and go back now if you need to make any corrections. Note that at any time in your registration process, um, before you submit your registration, you can use the save and log out link to exit. Then you would, if you, but if you do not log back in within 24 hours, your registration will expire and any tickets you ordered will be returned to inventory. So do not delay to log back in using the username and password that you created to complete your registration. If you did not select any tickets with, um, with fees and your balance due is zero, there are no more steps. The, on the summary page will have a finish button instead of a next button and if you click the finish button your registration will be submitted. However, if you have fees to pay, you'd click next to advance to the payment page after you've made any corrections. If you do have fees to pay on this page, first fill in that amount in the, in the box for the amount to apply to this form of payment. Then, then click on either credit card or check online as your method of payment. And then fill in the informa all the information that's necessary for that form of payment. Be sure that the mailing address is the one that is associated with the credit card you use. And when this information is complete and correct, click Process Payment. And it is going to show you if any part of the information is not correct so that you can get that corrected to and try again. When your payment is successfully processed, which we will not demo here, you will see an acknowledgement page uh, that you can print. Then within a few business days, normally within one business day, you will receive an email from the GA meeting service that confirms that we have processed your registration. Contact the GA meeting service if you need to make any changes after this time. Remember that at this stage, your request for a hotel reservation is just a request. At a later time, you will receive a separate notice from the GA meeting service that shows your hotel assignment. And that is it. That's all that's needed for assembly registration. If you do have questions or problems along the way, please contact the GA meeting service at gameetingservice at pcusa.org or by phone at 888 728-7228, extension 2417. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Deb. We really appreciate your assistance in giving us an overview of the General Assembly registration process. At this time, we're going to take a few questions that we've received. And like I said earlier, um, we will get to everyone's questions, maybe not right now, but we will uh, respond to any questions we receive in the questions box in the pane on the right. So if you are thinking of any questions right now that um, you thought of during this um, kind of overview, please go ahead and post them there. Uh, the first question that we're going to take is a question about meals. Um, how much are we allowed to spend on meals? We've, there's a couple mentions of per diem. What does that really mean? 
Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, as you saw during the um, registration process, there are some group meals provided for commissioners and advisory delegates, but you are on your own for most meals, and there is a per diem provided for the assembly. This year it's $47 per day, which is um, calculated as $12 for lunch, I'm sorry, $12 for breakfast, $13 for lunch, and $22 for dinner. You'll receive that um, in the form of a, um, of a credit card with a limit for the um, amount for uh, rates to your per diem um, as you register on site. And you can then use that in um, it, their hotel restaurants or other the concession areas in the convention center or other um, restaurants in the area. And there, are, and there are many in the downtown Pittsburgh area near the convention center. All right, uh, the next question is related to transportation. Uh, once I arrive at the airport or uh, bus station, is transportation provided and how am I going to get to the hotel? Um, um, on the days that most assembly participants will be arriving at the airport, which is Thursday and Friday, June 28th and 29th, there will be coaches providing transportation from the airport to the assembly hotels. This, the schedule will be confirmed as we have better information about, uh, about arriving flights, and, we'll send that, and that information will be sent to all registered participants a few weeks before the assembly, so you'll have a, to know about the schedule. The Committee on Local Arrangements is uh, recruiting volunteers who will be greeting um, us at the airport as we arrive, and they will help guide you to the, to the coaches and also provide information about other ways to get uh, to get downtown if you do arrive on a date or time when the when the assembly shuttles are not running. If you come in by mega bus or Amtrak, you'll you'll be arriving within a block or two of the convention center and the assembly hotel. So it'll be an, an easy walk for most or a very short cab ride. Great, that's really helpful. Um, what if um, I require special assistance during my time at the assembly? Um, there are a couple of places during the registration process where you can indicate that, both on the um, front profile uh, registration page and on the page where you're filling in your lodging information. Um, please indicate any special needs in one or both of those places. You may also call the GA meeting service or send that by email to us, and we'll probably be following up with a personal phone call so that we can make sure that um, that you have the, the services that, that you need to participate fully. Uh, we do give priority for assignments in the, um, in the closest hotels to those with, um, with mobility problems um, and have other ways to, to assist those with other um, disabilities or special needs. Uh, the most important thing is just to let us know what they are so that we can plan with you. Great. Thank you so much, Deb, for sharing this overview of the 220th General Assembly registration process, and thanks for all of you that have joined us online today. Immediately following this webinar, you're going to be asked to complete a really brief survey asking you about your experience of today's webinar. We encourage you to take a few moments to complete that survey. We appreciate your feedback and um, want to make sure that these webinars are helping meet the needs of our commissioners and advisory delegates who are beginning to prepare. Uh, next week's webinar will be on Tuesday, April the 10th, and it will be about the election of the moderator. Our featured presenter will be the moderator of the 218th General Assembly, Bruce Reyes Chow. You will be receiving an email later today with registration information as well as information about upcoming webinars. All webinars are being recorded and are available through the GA220 website, and there's also a complete schedule of upcoming webinars and uh, that's available for you to be able to review and um, make note of in your calendar. Um, the good news is that if you're not available for that live webinar, work conflicts or other, um, there's always going to be a video available, so you're not missing out. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we hope you have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.